Today's episode is brought to you by Butcher Box. Butcher Box is going to get you them good meats. Now let's jump into this podcast. Hello, everybody. It's time for Ghost and Friend Dog. Ghost and Friend Dog in the morning. In the morning. Live, 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 live. Before our recording studio, recording. Wake your ass up, it's the next in the morning. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the episode of Cax and Crendor in the. I'm out of town in the bad microphone. In the, <laughs> it's still the it's still the morning though, right? It's the um, evening here. Well, here it's like 6 p.m. So, uh, where? What time is it over there? Like it midnight? Is midnight right now. Yes. I see. Yeah. Where Where are you again? I'm in merry old London, England. I just got back from Belgium uh, where I went and oh. watched a bear have sex with a vampire. It was great. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I'm not going to expound upon that at all. <laughs> Go to social media if you want to know more. I'm not going to even explain it. Huh. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, now I'm here and I'm going to be working on video game things of a secret nature for a week and then I'll be back. And next week I won't sound like this and everything will be fine. I tried to set up my microphone. I don't know what happened. It wouldn't work. Yeah. No, I don't know. It was, uh, you're like, yeah, let's record like an hour and 15 minutes ago. I was like, all right, I was just editing. And then you, you took like. 20 minutes and i was like you know what i'm gonna get food this guy's taking forever so i got some food <laughs> i ate it still wasn't good no. then, I came, then i was starting start making coffee and then you're like all right i give up i'm just gonna do this and i was like all right sounds good to me yes i went with the most basic bitch 1999 microphone <laughs> setup where i'm just using my webcam to talk and so yeah, you'll you'll be fine it'll be all right yeah i yeah. brought my normal setup and everything was good to go and I had my computer over on this table with the microphone like plugged in. Everything was good. And when I went to go record, it was like <laughs> all static. I have no idea what I did wrong. I don't know if I messed up a cable while traveling. I have no clue. So here we are. And if you could see me right now, yeah, I am laying on my bed <laughs> like some sort of French whore, like <laughs> leaning kind of half over. <laughs> the nightstand next to it where my laptop is because I moved <laughs> everything over. And I'm like, you know, just kind of laying here like, oh, Monsieur Crando. You're not even in I France. I have so much news for you. <laughs> You're not even in France. Yeah, but like, you know, you don't want you don't want one of them English whores who's like, oh, Crando. That's not how an English horse. <laughs> uh, yeah, very, very true. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you, you got some wacky, uh, wacky tales then of traveling. I do. Oh boy. Do I ever first off once again, everywhere else in the world is just so much better when it comes to simply being walkable and being able to see stuff and do stuff. When I was in Ghent, they have entire areas of the city that are no car zones. People just out in the street walking, people just drinking in the street, good old times. I was <laughs> like, man, we messed up. America, we, our big cities messed up. I was thinking about what if New York had no car zones? That would be pretty cool, honestly. I'd like that. It would be very cool, yeah. So I don't know. That sucked. But uh, yeah, I wrote down some stories that are actually good, good stories. All right. Because I realized that, uh, well, I could tell you about... The event I went to and hanging out with Dodger. It was fun to see Dodger. Yeah, I can tell you all that stuff. Yeah. But instead, I'm going to tell you about our train ride. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, listen, you already know I care more about the train ride than all the other stuff. Well, of course you do, which is why I wrote <laughs> notes about it. Yep. So today we were going to get on our train. Uh, Dodger was like, hey, I might have booked us to leave at 8 a.m. And so last night we were out at this party and I was drinking a lot. And she's like, oh, by the way, we have to leave at eight. And for some reason, we were both booked at different hotels. So my hotel was about a 10 minute walk from hers. So I had to get up an hour early to take a shower, do all that stuff, and then walk over to her place to wait for her. Then we'd get on a, a tram, which, by the way, again, 
We got on a tram that cost a dollar, <laughs> took us to the train station. We got on the train. The chain, train was cheap as hell, and that took us to Brussels. The whole process, I was like, I, I wouldn't even need a car if I lived here. Anyway, <laughs> we get to Brussels. Wait, when did you go to bed? Uh, like 11. I was sensible. I was. Oh, okay. I thought I thought you were saying you had to go to bed like 2 a.m., wake up at 8 or something. No, 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 no. It, when I found out we had to leave at 8, or, or, or the train left at 8, I knew that meant, okay, I got to be up at 6. Yeah. So I can then be out the door by 6.45 to get to her by 7. Because in my mind, I was like, oh, it's going to take us at least 30 minutes to get to the train station. And then once we're there, then we got to find the train and board the train. So, you know, but uh, no, it took maybe six minutes to get to the train station because the tram just <laughs> took, us, took us right there. And then um, we just, yeah, it was easy. It was super easy to, to get that little small train over to Brussels. But anyway, we get to Brussels and Dodger and I are like, oh, coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That looks great. Let's get some coffee. So we get some coffee. Little did we know, our train departure from Brussels to London, I took the channel, Crendor. <laughs> I've never taken the channel before, and I'm going to let you know right now. I don't even know what a channel is. I just laugh because it sounds funny. So you know that if you take a train between England and mainland Europe, there is like you have to go through the English Channel. Right. And so you have to go underground, underwater. Oh, I see. And so the channel is that underground channel tunnel. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if the British call it the channel, but I love the channel. It's a great word. Uh, so the best way to describe it is when we were headed to Brussels from London, I was like, oh, yeah, I can't wait. This is going to be so much fun. We uh, zip away like almost 300 miles an hour on this damn train. And I guess we exited England so fast. I didn't know. Because when we hit the channel, I thought we were just going through like a few tunnels, like one tunnel, then another tunnel. And I didn't mm. realize, oh, I thought we were still in England when we made our first stop in France. <laughs> and I looked around and was like, wait, these aren't English words. <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> that's how fast this thing was going. It was crazy. Hey, that's crazy. Yeah, it was pretty impressive. I was like, wait a minute, we made it there already? So, but yeah, the channel... If anyone's wondering what it's like underwater, it's like just going through a dark tunnel and your ears pop, and that's it. Uh, it really isn't that impressive. Bad. Yeah, it's not that cool. No. Yeah. It's I not mean, like it's, the uh, wow one where you're like seeing like crazy shit, like sea lions swimming by. Not like that at all. Monster. No, it is, it no. is dark, <laughs> and you're on a train with like a hundred other people in your car, and everyone's speaking in like 50 different languages, <laughs> and you can't focus on anything. And uh, yeah, and then you're in a dark tunnel for. I'm going to say maybe a total of three minutes. It's not that long. You zip through. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. Wow. And then uh, I guess they don't want you under there a long time. I don't know. I don't know what the rules are. But <laughs> uh, So on the way back, we, we got some coffee. And our train it was supposed to be on track three. But we were like, wait a minute. Track one and two are the international trains. So does that mean we don't have to go through all the security stuff? We looked around. We we like saw it. We, we couldn't figure out what was gone. We saw the, the exit to our, our train platform. We're like, okay, let's get some coffee. Got some coffee. Walked over to the train platform and like, sorry, you're not allowed on this train. We're like, what do you mean? <laughs> They're like, the train's already leaving. And there was maybe 30 minutes left. We're like, wait, what? What are you talking about? They wouldn't <laughs> allow us on the train. So that's crazy. I know. And then Dodger and I had to go to the customer service in, in Brussels where imagine uh, me, her, and then 150 other people of various nationalities, all speaking various languages, trying to talk to customer support who also spoke various languages. And but there were only <laughs> yep. two customer support people available at the time. <laughs> Dodger's like, I, I need to get home to my kid. And I'm like, I don't know what to tell you right now. I don't know what's going on. And uh, we looked online to see if there are any more trains. And it said zero trains uh, were available leaving the rest of the day. Oof. And I was like, that can't, that can't be true. That can't be true. So we were waiting there. And after waiting for what seemed like an eternity, I finally just Googled, you know how there's like um, 
if you're looking for a plane, you would go to like Expedia or one of those other sites, right? Right. And in my mind, I'm like, well, if you think about tickets for a concert, concert venues will often have a certain number of tickets you can buy directly from them, but then tickets they sell to other people to then sell. I was like, well, surely Mm. there has to be some site called like Eurotickets.com. Yeah. And so I'm on my phone and my phone, uh, because the internet is just the worst when you're on your phone overseas, because I guess Verizon shouts Verizon for being crap is like, hey, you can have in Brussels two gigabytes of download. However, if you go over that, we cut you down to 3G connection. I hit my two my, my two gigabytes at 6 a.m. while taking a shower <laughs> watching a <laughs> podcast on my phone. <laughs> so, I, and I was like, well, I don't, it doesn't matter. I don't need to worry. So, <laughs> little did I know. I just, uh, so I'm sitting there on my phone, straight up the slowest I've ever been on a phone. And I'm going to say since whenever 3G was originally a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And the pages are taking forever to load. I'm just sitting there like, oh my God. But... I was right, and it turns out there were other websites that had tickets, and so we managed to get a ticket, and everything was fine. However, now we actually go to the right terminal, and I'll be honest, I don't know what the difference was between the train we missed and the train that we got on, because the train we got on, we had to go through four levels of security. We had to go through passport checks. The other train had none of that, and I don't know if we were just booked on the wrong train I have no idea, but uh, yeah, we it was a weird experience, and then that brings us to the stories, the actual real story. Oh boy, that was the, the lead up. Yes, that's the lead up. So in line right. security, I want you to imagine this because I think it's the perfect example of this. All right. Have you ever seen a weird, kooky British woman with curly hair? And a dress from like the 1950s, and she has glasses and like a oh that kind of accent. I can imagine that. Yes, I think everyone can. And then her yeah. husband, who's in a wrinkled short sleeve button up shirt that <laughs> the buttons aren't exactly buttoned correctly, <laughs> with like yeah. really crazy white hair, and he too has glasses. Uh, they were in front of us. And a he's, lot. he's got to be like, oh, is it all? <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. She, very, <laughs> she was very loud and said like weird kooky mannerism things. And he was like, bur, bur, I don't matter. Mm-hmm. so they're, they're drinking a coffee and a tea. He's holding the coffee. She's holding the tea, but they have two bags and they can't. In my mind, I would say one holds a coffee, one holds a bag, one holds a tea, one holds a bag. No, no, no. They keep switching back and forth where now she has the coffee and the tea and he has the two bags. Except he keeps trying to pull the two bags with one hand rather than use both hands. So they're holding up the line and there's maybe 12 people's worth of room in front of where they are at any given time and the people (laughs) in front of them. And behind us... (laughs) Are you know the British girls who always wear way too much makeup? I don't know what like you would call that type of person, but their face looks super painted on. Yep. They're behind us. And they're like, Oh this Roy, do this taking that time. <laughs> I'm just like, we are stuck in between these kooky goofballs and then these women behind us who are just very angry. And the kooky people in front of us. Every time anyone did anything around them, they'd be like, that's one for the book club. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can picture that 100%. Yeah, they're like, mm, that's one for the book club. And then the husband would just go, bur, bur, bur. I couldn't understand a word he said. <laughs> I, he, he kept like whisper speaking the entire time. And she would just be like, mm, tea or coffee. <laughs> And then they, she'd like pour it into his mouth from the cup. I'm like, give the man the cup. You <laughs> one of the bad. Yeah. Feed me like a bird. <laughs> Feed me like a bird. <laughs> yes. All yes. right, all right. Open up, open up. And I just couldn't help but laugh because it reminded me of every single time on media, in any type of media, you see the kooky British woman and her kooky husband. And I was like, these are them. They're real people and they're in front of us right now. And the entire time, he would have refused to take 
one bag in each hand. So he was rolling two, like imagine trying to roll two roller bags with one hand stacked on top of each other. That is pretty insane. It made no sense. The man, was he could have held one of the cups too, but instead it was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and of course the girls behind us are like, this is ridiculous. We're trying to get to a wedding. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. Okay. Cool. <laughs> what happened to them? Did they? Well, they, luckily, uh, when we got to, there was sort of like a split in where you would go to check your luggage. And so right. Brooke, like a genius, was like, zip, 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 like zipped around these, this couple. And because. Yeah. Line one, for example, was huge because this couple was holding up, and line two mm. had no one in it. So we just went to line two. <laughs> yeah, what happened that is, after that? I have no clue. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. Damn. Yeah. Honestly, she ruined it. She should have stayed in the line. <laughs> we would have found out. <laughs> we did have a train to catch. We already missed one. I don't think we cared at that point. That's true. Yeah. Although, then we would have even more stories. I mean, really, this is all Dodgers' fault. Well, don't worry because. Uh, Next up, while we're waiting for the train, I have to go mm. to the bathroom, right? All <laughs> and right. I'm like, yep. all right, I, you know what? I'm going to go so I don't have to go on the train. I don't even know where the bathrooms are on the train, so I'm just going to go. And while I'm in the bathroom, I open the door, and it is not like a public restroom situation, right, where there's multiple toilets. It's one toilet, one, uh, you know, sort of wash room kind of area with a sink and mm. whatever, and then a lock on the door, except – the lock on the door does not work. And now I'm thinking, Jesse, oh no. You're going to have to find a way to like <laughs> go to the bathroom <laughs> without people just walking in constantly. Yep. And so I'm sitting there squat over this damn toilet with one leg extended to the door to block it so people can't walk in. And the entire time I'm sitting there trying to like Go number two, people right. keep trying to open the door and they keep hitting my foot. <laughs> and they're like, oh, put on, put on. And I'm like, yeah, yeah something's <laughs> in here. So finally, you know, I'm done. I get up, go to wash my hands. As I'm washing my hands, a man opens the door and goes, put on, and walks in and just drops trowel and starts to take a dump <laughs> as I'm sitting there washing my hands, dude. That man is probably the guy from last week that was stuck in the elevator. <laughs> I just, he just finally found a bathroom. I couldn't He's believe. He's been waiting this whole time. <laughs> I was like, that guy must really have had to go because he had no shame. He looked at me right in the eyes and was like, pop on. And then just <laughs> went to the. <laughs> and I'm sitting there washing my hands like. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that man did not care. He had to go. Yeah, he had to go, and I couldn't do anything about it. I, I even said, sorry, like one of those, like, sorry, someone's in here. I yeah. said, sorry. And he goes, pardon. <laughs> <And just walked. laughs> At least he, you know, friendly about it. Yeah, he did right. not I mean, care. And here's the thing. He didn't do the Midwest. He didn't go, oh. Yeah. You, you, you had to do that. You're like, oh, I did <laughs> oh that. Sorry. I did that one time when a guy really tried to forcefully open the door, and I go, I'm like, sorry. And he's like, oh. And I go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then he left but this dude was like if you're not taking a dump i need that toilet like, okay dude at least he made his day you yeah. know yeah yeah yeah. and so that happened and then the uh i'm gonna say the icing on the cake was while we're on the train they were serving a meal i could not understand what the uh, attendant this train, I don't know what you call the train flight attendants. I don't know what you call them. but um, Train flight attendants? <laughs> you know, like, uh, like train aisle managers, we'll say. I don't know. Um, she's walking down the aisle with her cart of various foods. And, you know, it's like uh, anything you would get on a plane kind of stuff. Right. But it's essentially just the... The what do you call them on a plane? No, I can't even remember the <laughs> stewardess, right? But yeah, it's like yeah, on a yeah, train. yeah, but like whatever it would be on a train, yeah, yeah. And she's speaking because they have to speak, I believe, both German, French, and English. She's speaking to various different people in different languages, but no one in our car is English except for Brooke and I. Mm. I'm trying to make out what she's saying, and the entire time I hear her say that one of the options is a salad. 
One of the options is chicken. And one of the options is, and she kept repeating this over and over again, and I even made Brooke stop and listen. She would say, <laughs> hot dog and cuckoos. <laughs> and I was like, sorry, is it op- one of the options a hot dog with couscous? <laughs> I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Brooke, you got it, Brooke. Pull off your headphones. You got to listen to this. <laughs> and, and you know, she's talking. She's like, the chicken uh, salad with Thai basil and the hot dog and couscous. And I was like, no, <laughs> she's not. There is not a hot dog with couscous on this on this tray. <laughs> and so as she got closer. I, I kept being like, listen, just listen to her repeat what's on this, this train. Just listen. Mm. And again, she'd be like, chicken, uh, salad, tab, and hot dog, <laughs> couscous. I was like, dude, no, <laughs> there's no way it's a hot dog with couscous. And so finally she gets to us and now she switches up to English. And she's like, today we have a salad. Uh, with a Thai basil dressing and a chicken dish and a haddock with couscous. <laughs> I was like, oh, so that does make, uh, yeah, yeah, that does make more sense. Way more sense. And I was like, oh, okay. But the entire time I was like, wait a minute. So in other languages, haddock was hot dog. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> that is, it's got to be. Which language was it? Probably French. Uh, mostly, like I was saying, French and German. Okay. Yeah. I see. But, I feel uh, like German people are like Hadouk. Hadouk. Got to German for Street Fighter. Hadouk. Hadouk. Hadouk with couscous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, I mean, listen, I'm half German. I took German in those language apps. You know. Yeah. I I kind of know. <laughs> So, Actually, I took German in like seventh, eighth grade. That's when we learned Hadoken. Yeah, that's it. everyone knows about Hadoken. Yeah. One of the best <laughs> fish you can eat. A lot of uh, omega threes. Yeah. What did you get? I got the uh, the salad. It was delicious and uh, everything was fine. Yeah. The best part was is the woman was like, Can I interest you in some uh, wine or champagne? And, Dod- <laughs> and Dodger was like, I'll have the wine. She, the woman looks at her and goes, are you sure you don't mean champagne? <laughs> <laughs> we were both like, I guess. And she's like, let me give you a sip. And so she poured Dodger like a little tiny bit of champagne. Dodger tried it and was like, oh, it's good. She goes, oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ah, this woman is 100% French. And I mean, yeah, listen, if I was there, you already know. I've been like, what wine is this? Uh, are we talking? Are we talking like actual champagne? Or are we talking sparkling wine? Is this like an actual regional champagne? Also, which winery? Oh, I guarantee she would have been like, uh, "Are you sure you're not a little French, Joseph?" <laughs> I've actually had Billicart Samon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I only drink Billicart Samon, so if it's not, please get it out of here. She would just start talking to you in French, expecting you to know. <laughs> and I would go, "Wee oui, wee." Oui. <laughs> And then I would just keep keep saying wee wee because that's all I can say. Oh, I t- speaking of wine, uh, I went to uh, that party that I went to the night before was in a mm. like an old monastery. It the name of it, I don't remember what it was called, but it literally sounded like a Final Fantasy last level. It was called like <laughs> Monasterio <laughs> Memoria. I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> this is the place where the final boss is. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're at this monastery and they're trying to do like a medieval feast thing but they have all these different beers by the way shout out to sour cherry beer in belgium i drank it every day i was there maybe too much Loved it. <laughs> oh my god oh, it just tastes like sour cherries and beer. yeah oh it's like barely beer it's so good mm. um and then they had wines and you know various things like that but one of the funniest things was is because a lot of the um female streamers who were there like a lot of the ladies who showed up who were streamers who were at this event Mm. they all dressed up in cosplay like various forms of uh like sexy queen or sexy elf or like sexy i don't know guild master you know like that kind of thing right (laughs) yeah (laughs) by the way appreciated all of it um but (laughs) the funniest thing was is while we're at this monastery the the servers who were there were all dressed up like peasants 
And I kept laughing about the fact these peasants are walking around with bottles of wine, pouring it into like chalices for all of these people dressed up as like royalty. And I was like, this is how revolution started. Like watching this. <laughs> this it's like medieval times. Was, it was straight up a tableau of just like, oh, no, I get it now. I get like all these like these young girls dressed as straight up surfs, dude, pouring into <laughs> like, like the goblets of, of all these streamers who are dressed in like golden armors and outfits and like <laughs> low cut sexy white dresses. And I'm like, yeah, no, this is this is how shit would go down. <laughs> it does i mean it does make sense yeah yeah it made me laugh real hard i was like yeah no i absolutely the disparity happening here right now in the year 2023 is hilarious peasant bring me my wine that's i swear to you that's what it was they Dogs would walk alone. around and be like would you like some more wine my lord and i was like no nah, i'm all right and then the girls <laughs> that were all into it they'd be like why yes i would love another picture and i'm like yo no this is this is how revolutions <laughs> occur. This is you guys will be overthrown yeah. tonight. A hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> no, that is. Uh, yeah, that's you got. You got to make friends. It was like in medieval times. We made friend with our server guy. Yeah, I mean you Remember? gotta. You got. Yeah. You gotta make friends with the people because when the revolution <laughs> happens, I'm not getting my head cut off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was uh, was it like? How many streamers and like YouTube was it like a lot? Um, they had. It wasn't a lot. It was, I would say, maybe thirty, but from around the world. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, the only people that were from America were like seven of us, maybe. Everyone else was either from Germany or the UK or from mm. like you know other parts of the world. All right. Yeah, and so like there was people from Brazil, things like that. Yeah, but that's pretty cool. I didn't know there was that many different uh, like streamers and YouTuber nationalities there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was mostly, you know, I, I guess the Baldur's Gate kind of fandom. The the D and D, a lot of D and D people were there. Oh yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Dodger and I were there, I think, because we just are always invited to their stuff. Because <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah, were, we like, were there for. <laughs> yeah, we were there for the first thing they did way back when it was just me and her. Yeah. And so I think they just invite us back because they like us and we like them. So it works out. Mm. But um, yeah, it was mostly D&D because that's, that's what Baldur's Gate is. It's D&D, but video yeah. gamified. And so that's a lot of what it was. Um, but if you want to go again, find the clip online where Sven, the guy playing the game, was like, how should I do these romance options? And you can hear someone in the crowd loudly saying to press all the wrong options. And eventually it leads to a bear having sex with a vampire. And I just want to let you know, if you find that clip, you can hear me laughing diabolically in the background. <laughs> and it's very <laughs> obvious it's me and I'm the guy who pulled the trigger on that whole thing. And I'm like <laughs> losing my mind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I got, I would definitely be able to tell your laugh out there. Yeah. And then they... Then, Everyone was just like, why would you do that? It's like, why not? Like some, yeah. <laughs> some, some, some guy in the comments of uh, some tweet was like, so crazy that gamers are pushing bestiality on people. It's like, bro, <laughs> this game gave you an option for a druid to turn into a bear and have sex with a vampire. I'm going to do it. I need to see what that <laughs> shit looks like. I'm going to do it. Like you don't see anything. The, the, goof, yeah. the goof of the video is, as the like bear and vampire go to do it, it cuts to a squirrel in a tree holding an acorn, and then he looks shocked and drops the acorn, and it's like a really <laughs> funny goof. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, now that's 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 funny. Like, come on, you know that's yeah. funny. Don't be uptight. Like, oh, yeah. streamers. Oh. Yeah, I mean, you're, there's always going to be those people. Doesn't matter. They're just going to get angry about something. Yeah. Oof. But um, by the way. Yeah, a train attendant is what they're called. Good to know. I um, yeah. <laughs> I guess that I guess that like flight attendant, train attendant. I guess it makes sense. Yeah. What? Yeah, why is it a plane attendant? I uh, I guess there's flight attendants technically. That's what I'm saying. But if it's Same. train attendant and flight attendant, why isn't it a plane attendant? Listen, I don't make the words. 
I, I just read them. But I was saying plane, train, they rhyme, the attendants. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It would make more sense. It would make a lot a more plane sense. Attendant. But maybe if you Although, say plane attendant, people think that means you attend the plane and not the flight, which is what the flight attendant does. But then again, if you're the train attendant, would it, I don't know these rules. But if you're a plane attendant, you also could just be plane. Like it's a very plane attendant. You know? If you're a train attendant, you up. could also be like to help people train. I guess that's true too. All right, I'm out. Of, I'm out. I got nothing. I'm tapping out, bro. I can't do this. <laughs> uh, let's see. What did I do? We had a. Uh, oh, do you remember? This is like a year ago. I was talking about how. In fact, I thought of this because it was Fourth of July. So on Fourth of July, we had like a barbecue with family and some friends there, and it was just you know I watched the hot dog eating contest as one does. Uh, Joey Chestnut won again. Classic. Was there any couscous involved or no? I didn't see any, but it would have made it a lot more fun if I did. Right, if they right. Did have to Turns eat out the whole thing was haddock the whole time. Who knew? Uh, <laughs> or a haddock eating contest. Right, Joey Chestnut won that too. <laughs> yeah, the I dipped my fish have... in the water. <laughs> they apparently have a bunch of eating contests. Nobody cares about them. They just care about the hot dog one. What are the other ones? They were like, just the other week, he won the sh- the strawberry shortcake eating contest. I was like, what the shit? <laughs> <laughs> this dude's just like every week he's eating, he's power eating something. But he's like, everybody just cares about the hot dogs. Do you think not wrong. that he, the reason why he does all that is because he just doesn't have to pay for food? No, I mean, I think he's just making money. To- <laughs> so now he's just, this is his job. Joey Chestnut net worth. I gotta see how much he's worth. Now you're making me look this up. Around four million. What? Yeah. He's look doing, at that. He's doing better than us. I want to see. Let's see. Sixty. So he's had sixteenth time winning. Uh, major league eating. It's an actual. It's like a majorleagueeating.com. How on earth is he the sixteen <laughs> time Nathan's hot dog eating contest? Sixteen times. Yeah, I think he. The one time he lost was to that YouTube kid. Uh, I can't remember his name, but it was just the other year. And then he won it again the next year. He, yeah, wow. He holds the records for hard-boiled eggs, asparagus, pulled pork sandwiches, tacos from Taco Bell, hot dogs, chicken wings, hamburgers, pork ribs, meat pies, corned beef sandwiches, shrimp wontons, gyros, Philly cheesesteaks, funnel cakes, fish tacos, Traditional tacos, mutton sandwiches, jalapeno poppers, pepperoni rolls, pork roll sandwiches, Twinkies, boysenberry pies, burritos, long form, pulled pork, horseshoe sandwich, San Pedro fish market shrimp, canteen sandwiches, tamales, grilled cheese, gyoza, pastrami, gumbo, ice cream, poutine, shrimp cocktail, hostess donuts, <laughs> salt potatoes, turkey, pierogi, white hut, cheeseburgs, pizza hut, pizzones, kolache, <laughs> kolache <laughs> factory, kolaches, brain tacos, croquetas, apple pie, pepperoni roll, canteen sandwiches, two foot slice pizza, carnita taco, H-E-B, true Texas beef, versus sandwiches, waffle egg style, or waffle ego style, ramen noodles and cherry pie that is um too much how is that man still (laughs) alive i don't i don't know if like they throw it all up afterwards like they have to right i i I don't know because that's like there's your stomach can't like digest all that but even then all that purging would then cause damage to you yeah like something's something bad's happening (laughs) inside it's that's so much stuff. I mean, he made, he ate 47 grilled cheese sandwiches in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not normal. That is so not normal. <laughs> <laughs> that's and he ate 13.76 pounds of pork rib meat. All right. Well, I see I see that. I had to look up the guy who defeated him. Yeah. Matthew Kai Stoney. Yeah. Yeah, Matt Stoney. That's what it was. And I just want to say his YouTube channel, Joey Chestnut may have been worth $4 million, but Matt Stoney has 16.3 million subscribers on YouTube and 3.52 billion views. Just doing the oh, math yeah. in my head on how much each of those views is worth, that man made bank. Oh, yeah. He's, and he's still making bank. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, okay, what is his. What is this vibe? It started in 2011 at the Stockton, California Asparagus Championship. 
<laughs> which is a thing to eat. Right. But um, he... Oh, also his YouTube career is crazy because in 2014 he started his channel and he hit 100,000 subscribers in 2014. He wins the hot dog eating contest, instantly hits a million subscribers. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. But his <laughs> success is so good that between 20... 15 and 2020 he got 11 uh, sorry 10 million more subscribers oh my god yeah that's crazy that's cra- people love to watch this man eat apparently so yeah some of the things he's eaten 5.5 jeez 5.5 pounds of birthday cake in 9 minutes and 17 seconds <laughs> milliseconds he ate 10.5 pounds of yogurt land frozen yogurt in six minutes, stop. How on earth? I don't understand. He ate slug burgers, 43 slug burgers in 10 minutes at the World Slug Burger Eating Championship. What is a slug burger? <laughs> now they got me Googling <laughs> slug burgers. <laughs> I don't know what a slug burger is. A slug Let's burger, see. originally Weeks Burger, is the traditional southern food in the area of northeast Mississippi. Okay. Consisting of a patty made from a mixture of beef and pork. Mm. And inexpensive meat extenders such as soybeans. What? Deep fried in oil. It is typically <laughs> served on a bun with mustard, pickles, onion, and in some places, a side of french fries or onion rings. Now that is certainly a burger. I can't. Yeah. I can't. I Yeah, it says main ingredients. Beef or pork with an ex- inexpensive meat extender, such as soybeans. Meat extender is not a phrase I like at all. <laughs> you gotta get your meat extender to extend your meat. Gotta get your meat extender in there to make the meat slice. <laughs> uh, I gotta go to his more recent wins. Okay, here we go. What the shit? In 2020, he ate four pounds. 1.9 ounces of Halloween candy in six minutes. Shit, this like... <laughs> How on earth? In 2021, like he ate 28.5, 24-ounce servings of popcorn in eight minutes. Like, I know it's about your stomach expanding, like, to insane proportions, but, like, it has to hit a point where your stomach's just like, dude, <laughs> Yeah, I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> like, this is... <laughs> this is, I'm done. I don't know. The I, last thing that it says on here for him is he went to the Heart Attack Grill in uh, Las Vegas and ate a 20,000 calorie hamburger in four minutes and 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's like <laughs> weeks worth of calorie. <laughs> 20,000 in four minutes, dude. <laughs> That's like when people run a four-minute mile. He was like, I ate 20,000 calories. That's the exact inverse of a four-minute mile. You know what the insane part is? The dude is five foot eight, 130 pounds. He's literally like the size of me. Yeah, if you look at Joey Chestnut, he's a little skinny boy too. Yeah, and in fact, there was like, <laughs> there's the women's competition, and there was like uh, this, one, this one woman's one like every year. Uh, I think it's Miko Soto. What's her name? Mickey So Sudo. Mickey Sudo. That's it. Uh, and then there's like these other, <laughs> these other women. This one Japanese girl. I swear to you, she was like five foot one, like ninety pounds, and she ate like fifty hot dogs. I was like, that is insane. That is insane. I'm. I don't know if I should be impressed or truly horrified. <laughs> it's crazy. Like uh, honestly, when I watch, I'm just, I'm just in shock. Like, I'm like, I can't imagine doing this. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm Mickey Sudo on competitive eating. Mickey Sudo, she's just like a normal human. I don't know what to think about any of this. <laughs> yeah. It's uh it's it's just weird. Like I I'd watch an entire documentary on like food eater people. Like there's gotta be one, right? Like how they train, what they go through. I mean, I like have what to imagine, happens after. I see a lot of them on. I'm looking at photos of them right now, and it looks like mm-hmm. a lot of them in between when they're not because they all start out and they all kind of look like normal. 
But the mm-hmm. more recent photos, they all look ripped as shit. And I have to imagine that somewhere along the line, doctor was like, if this is what you want to do, you need to work out uh, like five hours a day. Yeah, it has to be. <laughs> uh, it's a uh, wait. OK, so I just this is Wikipedia, it says, right? Discomfort following an event is common with nausea, heartburn, abdominal cramping, and diarrhea. People may also use laxative or force themselves to vomit following the event with associated risks. Yeah, yeah. associated risks is the key. <laughs> so it says, do competitive eat, do they vomit after each competition? But this one says, yes and no. Competitive eaters do not vomit intentionally after competitions. A competitor cannot vomit or throw up consumed food to win the competition, but their stomach stops contracting. They will feel nausea and vomit. Yo, that, I, I'm gonna let you know, I don't think it's worth it. In the, in the food eating contest, vomiting is called reversal. <laughs> They're like, guys, we need a better terminology for this. For like, uh oh, he's fucking throwing up. He's like, got oh, he's full reversal. <laughs> he's going full reversal right now. <laughs> Sounds like a skateboarding thing. Like, bro, he just reversed. He hit the full reversal. Like, I'm just, I'm looking at this other shit. Like, dude, she won the Knott's Berry. No, actually, she got third place in the Knott's Berry Farms Festival World Pie Eating Contest. She ate 9.5 pounds of pie in eight minutes. Jesus. <laughs> she went to see, she did the World Turkey Eating Championship where she got first place. She ate 8.8 pounds of turkey in 10 minutes. Oh my God. That is, it's just it's just so much food constantly. I just can't. It's so much. In such a short amount of time, that's the shocking thing. I bet there are people out there who could 100% eat eight pounds of turkey if you gave them enough time. Yeah, but even then, like they're they're eating past their brain response because it's supposed to be like your stomach to brain. Your stomach's like, "Yo, we're full," and then the brain's like, "Yo, guys, we're full." But it does like they eat so fast they just bypass that. Rib Fest, Chicago's Rib Mania Eating Championship. She got first (laughs) for eating almost five pounds in eight minutes. (laughs) oh my god like in my mind you have to go through the bone you have to like what is yeah. the plan like you just <laughs> sucking it off and like what is going on there? yeah you're not even chewing you're just straight up like gulp <laughs> like that is yeah, the um, buffalo wing eating championship six pounds se- almost seven pounds of bu- of buffalo wings 12 minutes navigating the bone alone how <laughs> I, I, I don't know, dude. I just don't know. I don't know either. But that wasn't even my main point of the story. Oh, oh my okay. <laughs> so my main point was it was 4th of July, so I had to watch the hot dog eating contest, right? So I did. And apparently it got delayed, and so it almost wasn't going to happen. And then it happened because the rain passed, but, the, you know, whatever. Uh, and I was like, woo, all right, hot dogs. So then... I had the memory I always have, which was one fourth of July, like, I don't know, maybe like 13 years ago. I remember playing on my Nintendo DS a video game of a Final Fantasy game, and I couldn't remember which one it was. And I brought this up like a year ago, and everybody was trying to guess what it was. And I was like, nope, not that. And I was like, it starts in a cave. All right. And I think you got something. It's not Chocobo's Dungeon. No, but I finally figured it out. Okay. After watching enough YouTube playthroughs of all these games, and it was Final Fantasy 3 for the DS. Interesting. Final Fantasy yeah. 3, not Final Fantasy 6. No, 3. Interesting. For the Nintendo DS. And I think it was remade or something, because they're all like they're like DS characters, right? So like if I show you What uh, what year was this? There you go. Yeah, it was 2006 it's from. Uh, yeah, Final Fantasy 3 on the Nintendo DS 2006. And I remember playing this game, and I could never figure out which one it was. And then I found a playthrough, and I was like, that's it! In the cave! I didn't then, know! Uh, I didn't know they made, like, released this for DS. No clue. Yeah. So, I remember playing this for about 45 minutes, and then I was like, alright, that was fun, and then I never played it again. <laughs> uh, but for some reason, <laughs> I always had like nostalgia. And I think it was just the, the opening menu music being like, 
And then just, you know, going through this cave and being like, whoa. And then that was it. Uh, but I was glad I found it. That was the main point. Um, and then, you know, it was barbecued. And that was 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> so that was fun. And then uh, my big story, that's not really like a big story, but I went to get my driver's license renewed, right? Oh, boy. And yeah. uh, so I was like, all right. So I had to go. I had to take the visual and the written test, which like you have to do every once in a while, which I took that and I missed zero questions. I was like, I don't know how people <laughs> fail this thing. It was like, what do you do at a stop sign? Stop. Go through it. Honk your horn. I'm like, Duh, oh, man. Got to honk <laughs> that horn, tricky. bro. <laughs> honk horn? Uh, although some people do, you know, and they've passed the test and they're still driving out there like that i mean you're allowed to lie uh, on that thing i think probably yeah <laughs> they're like i don't care if it tells me to stop i'm honking my horn yeah uh so anyway the main main thing here was i was waiting in line and i was like all right you know waiting to get up there for them to tell me where to go and this woman behind me comes in and she's on her phone and she's like I, how are you how are you how, okay okay but how are you still there how are you still there? And I was like, the shit is going on. And so she was like, I, we left at the same time. I can't believe, okay, what, just call me back. And then she hangs up and then she's, she's there with her kid who I think is like getting a permit or like learning how to drive. And she's just like, I don't know what he's doing. He's just, he's in the parking lot of like the grocery store. He just, I don't know. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And then he calls back and then she's like, what? Okay. Yeah, I, I listen. We're at the DMV. I can't talk. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, uh, like literally everybody was just looking at her because of how loud she was being. And uh, that was like, all right, this is a great start. That's a happy marriage, so, it sounds like. Oh, very, very happy. Uh, <laughs> then my favorite was I go up to the, the counter. He's like, all right, go over there. And I go up and this guy, I, I swear to God, he looks like uh, Arthur from King of Queens. Right. If you're, if you're yeah, you know, okay. Queen, he, yeah. this guy looks like Arthur, 100 percent could be his brother. And he's just like, all right, you're looking to renew your license. All right. Great. We're going <laughs> to all right, look into the thing. All right. Look there. Look right. Tell me what you see. And then I was like, all right. He's like, all right, you're good. And then he starts like filling out the thing. He's like, have you ever had this thing that would prevent you from driving a vehicle? Have you ever been taken too many drugs or alcohol to prevent you from driving a vehicle? And he's like, do you have any uh, physical or mental issues to prevent you from driving a vehicle? I was like, God, I hope not. And he was like, <laughs> <laughs> he just like started bursting out laughing. And I was like, ha, ha, yeah. And uh, he's like, hey, you know what? You have a good day. Get that license. And I was like, well, I, I got my license already. He's like, hey, renew that license. <laughs> I was like, I will. The best part about that is I know for a fact, having been, I went, I don't remember who it was. It was years ago. One of our many friends, and maybe they'll listen to this and be yeah. able to call themselves on this. But <laughs> years ago in LA, I went with them because they were like, I just want someone to keep me coming to the DMV because I'm going to be bored. And I was like, I got nothing to do. And we go up right. to the to the lady who was at the, you know, the window. Mm. And she's the exact same questions. But she's like, do you have anything that could prevent you from doing that? And I don't remember what the joke they made was, but they made a joke just like how you did, except our person goes, sir, it's not funny. This is a serious question. <laughs> <laughs> and we were laughing. We thought we were very like, <laughs> she's like, it's not funny. This is serious. <laughs> like, okay, yeah, okay. That's, a, that's a true DMV employee right there. <laughs> Hundred percent. Because then, then that reminds. Then I got to the the thing where you like take your test, and they're like, "All right, are you prepared for the driver's written test?" And I was like, "I mean, I hope I am." And she's like, "Well, I hope you are too, because I don't want to have to fail you." And I was like, <laughs> "Okay, there you go. You do not play <laughs> around with these people." Yeah, that was the one where uh, she was just she wasn't goofing around. Yeah, there's so, always the uh, one who's like. <laughs> This is my life, sir. <laughs> and then uh, my favorite, aside from the Arthur guy, is this this man who he looked like Wilfred Brimley. You know the the oh, I'm very the big aware. Wilfred mustache Brimley mustache and everything. Yes. And he was he's the guy who like checked me in, and he was like the guy I went to at the end who's like giving the thing. He's just like, 
Here you go, temporary license. Uh, use that if you're doing it. It'll come in soon. Get out of here. <laughs> I was like, all right, see ya. I was like, I love that guy. He's just like, here's your shit. Get out. I'm like, all right. Yeah, we need more of those people. <laughs> we do. He was keeping things moving. Yeah. He's like, and, look, uh, I got to go home today. I ain't got time for this. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that was my fun DMV experience. And I was like, thank God I don't got to do this for another like five years or whatever it is. Did you have the... to get the new thing? Like there's a new type of. Oh, the ID? real ID. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have to get that yet. Apparently that's like in a year or two. Yeah. I just, I think, I don't know. I think that's the next thing I'm going to get rather than just a normal ID. Just so I don't have to go back again. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the uh, by the time I got to renew it. Then I'll just get that one and be like, whatever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was that was my fun week. <laughs> Sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, it was just really errands, to be honest. Well, you know what else is fun? Getting incredible deals on premium cuts of meat with Butcher Box. And deals this good are hard to come by at the grocery store. I know if you're like me, sometimes you go to the grocery store, you're looking for a, a premium cut of meat, something to really hammer home that dinner and you get there and either it's gone or they just don't have it or the quality isn't great butcher box is going to bring you that high quality meat and seafood right to your home we're talking 100 percent grass-fed beef free range organic chicken pork raised crate free wild caught seafood humanely raised no antibiotics no hormones none of that stuff and the best part is it's delivered right to your doorstep free shipping always and you can do anything from curated to customized boxes and plans the variety is crazy, but as I've said before, I am a chicken boy, and I love to make the peri-peri chicken, put some of that sauce on there, go to town, grill it up. Oh my goodness, it is delicious. It is exactly what I want since I can't get overseas, and scrum shum shum man, some Nando's, which actually I can do right now, actually. The taste is delicious. The convenience of getting some high-quality steaks, oh my god, I love a good steak, delivered right to me. I cannot say enough good things about it. If you want to, right now, get a special deal from us, sign up today at butcherbox.com cox. Use code cox to get New York strips for a year, plus $20 off your first order. That's butcherbox.com cox, and use code cox, C-O-X, to claim this deal. All right, let's go to chapter two. Something's got credo, credo. How's that traffic out there? Oh boy, traffic. Uh, I want to take the traffic segment to actually mention that we had a guy comment last week about their masters in public management and leadership. Uh, it's basically a crossroads of sociology, philosophy, economics, organizational theory, scientific methods, political science, etc. It is to craft theories on management, behavior, organizational structure of government, how, so can, or how can you affect organizations, people around me, what types of leadership, uh, and then some other stuff. So that's what a leadership degree is. Back to you. All right. I mean, I we didn't doubt it was a thing. It's yeah. just a crazy thing. <laughs> yeah. Like the like concept even of that, saying, it's like, I got a like degree in leading, is like, a, it's a wild thing to say. It's just like even that. It's like it's eight different things combined. <laughs> like that's it's so many different areas, you know. It's a lot. Some might think too much. Some might think too much. Not me though. <laughs> Not me either. Right. But right. I wouldn't do it. You do you. Like I wouldn't do yeah. it. But like you know, you can do it. Yeah. That's the traffic. All right. Let's go to weather. Ooh, weather. All right, weather. We got a weather request. I figured we'd pick this one since you're already there. Castleton, England. I mean, like, I'm right in Castleton, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right there. It's it's a village of about 600 people, uh, but it's popular because it's located in the Peak District National Park in the Pennine Hills that run north to south along the center of northern England. As such, it's very scenic, popular with hikers, plus there's several caves, including Blue John Cavern, where they mine the mineral Blue John, a very rare form fluorite only found in the area. Also, they filmed part of the Princess Bride in a nearby valley of Cave Dale. Now you're making me literally look up Blue John. I'll be honest, Blue John looks kind of, it's beautiful. Blue John. Oh yeah, look at that. I've never heard That's of it before. Cool. It looks great though. Okay. Yeah. I haven't either. Yeah, although a lot of it looks purple. 
It oh, does look purple, blue. but it looks kind of like tie dye a little bit too, which I'm here for. Yeah, I guess maybe the the purple is like blue mixing with stuff. Or what makes purple blue and red? Well, maybe the whole thing is like blue. John, the goof is like it wasn't blue, but it was like John's blue. You know what I mean? And that's purple. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, Can we I'll make up a lore like total bullshit? Like, <laughs> it's like yeah, this sounds. This guy sounds right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so let's go to Castleton, England. Here we go, Castleton. I need to do the thing. There we are. Uh, Castleton, England weather currently it is sixty-two degrees Fahrenheit. Feels like sixty-two degrees. Ninety-eight uh, percent humidity. Oh my God. What is it Florida? Pressure, 30.01 inches, visibility 5 miles, winds at 5 miles an hour, 4.50 a.m. sunrise, 9.33 p.m. sunset, dew point 62, UV index 0 of 11, moon phase, waning gibbous. Uh, looking at the 10-day here, we have 58 degrees currently Sunday. It's going to be 69, nice, with p.m. showers. Monday, 65 with showers. Tuesday, 63 with thunderstorms. Wednesday, 61 showers. Thursday, 61 showers. Friday, 60 showers. Saturday, 62 light rain. And Sunday, 61 light rain. Every day is 60-something with rain, which honestly, I love. I would love that weather. Oof. I am now terrified. I'm trying to figure out how far that is from where I am now because so much rain. I'm like, no. No. <laughs> you don't like the rain? I mean, not days of it on the one week where I'm out of the country. <laughs> Uh, it does look like it's more north. Great. I'll take that. Uh, or wait, Castleton. Is this Castleton? Where? Yeah, there. It's, uh, by Sheffield. Oh, well, of course. Well, obviously, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, northwest of Nottingham. Okay, so it's north-north. Yeah, it's north-north. So I think, I think you're good. Although you'll probably still get rain. Because, yeah. That's, it's like, I like... I love those 60 degrees and rain. I would love like a week of that and then a week of like sun and like alternate. That would be my ideal weather. Okay. I'm glad I know what your ideal weather is. (laughs) Yeah, that'd be fantastic. What's your ideal weather? What if you could have one thing or like alternating things? Um, sunny 65 degrees. Like every day. Yeah. No rain ever. Um, <clears throat> rain at night, sunny and 65, uh, uh, all day. And then at 9 PM rain. All right. That's fair enough. I like that. That'd be the perfect all the time. I'd be happy. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. You go sleep with the rain. Although I don't know if sunny and 65 is enough to dry up all the rain. I don't know what the rules are. So I imagine my world would be some sort of underwater house game, but you know. <laughs> it's probably like Seattle. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that is, hold on, I gotta, I wanna see if this is, like, one of those places that's, like, old-timey houses real quick. I wanna let you know, I was about to say, there is a place here called Ye Old Cheshire Cheese Inn. (laughs) And I am all about it. That's gotta be good. There's a place called the Haddock Hideaway, which is even funnier now, because I think it's the Hot Dog Hideaway. (laughs) <laughs> That's got to be the hot dog hideaway. <laughs> hot dog <laughs> hideaway? <Duncan>. Yeah. <laughs> the Goose Hill Hall. The Old they Barn. <laughs> Three Roofs Cafe. Ye Old Nags Head. The Bull. The George. <laughs> the George. I love this place. <laughs> they, and if you look at them, they look old. Oh, yeah. They are old. Like the Three, Roof, Three Roofs Cafe is just like. Actually, that probably looks like the most modern of the bunch. Uh, yeah, look at that. Honestly, yeah, I love the aesthetic. And actually, everything looks good there. Yeah, big fan. Big fan. Yeah. Um, and that's the weather. All right, let's go to sports. Sports. Welcome to the sports desk. Uh, over at the sports desk, we've got sports. Starting with NBA Summer League action. Uh, Pretty much all the rookies and like sophomore players and players trying to make a team playing a summer league. And it's very okay, but it's basketball to watch in the summer. So I always watch it anyway. Uh, Some players have already gotten hurt, so that kind of sucks. But 
What are you going to do? Uh, then we have baseball. And baseball currently about to start their all-star break. But as of right now, we got the Rays in first with the Orioles right behind them. Got the Cleveland Guardians in first with the Twins right behind. The Rangers in first with the Astros right behind. You got the Braves sitting in first pretty nicely. You got the Reds in first, the Brewers right behind, and the Diamondbacks with the Dodgers right behind. And uh, that is sports. Okay. What is our fact of the day? Fact of the day. Day, 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 day. Australia is wider than the moon. What? Wait, what? What do you mean? It says the moon sits at 3,400 kilometers in diameter, while Australia's diameter from east to west is almost 4,000 kilometers. What? That doesn't seem like that's right. Uh, oh, that's what it says. There's no more Australia. explanation? It doesn't say anything else? That's all it says. Australia, what if I look up Australia wider than moon? This says, is Australia wider than the Earth's moon? Yes and no. It depends on what yardstick we use. Uh, oh my God, this is like a whole, a whole thing. So maybe it actually isn't completely factual, but it says Australia is an island continent, the sixth largest country after Russia, Canada, China, and the United States and Brazil. Total land area of 7.69 million square kilometers. Blah, 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 blah. According to NASA, the moon's equatorial diameter is 3,476 kilometers, whereas Australia's width from east to west, 4,000. By that measure, Australia is indeed wider than the moon, but not by much. We also need to consider that the moon's shape is spherical. This is an important distinction. Think of the moon as a ball, a three-dimensional object, whereas the island continent is like a two-dimensional surface. So while Australia's total land area... As noted above is 7.69 million. The moon's surface is 37.94 million square kilometers. The And the, the tweet, oh, this is all from a tweet. The tweet only made a narrow claim that the continent was wider than the Earth's satellite. Therefore, based on specific wording of the claim in the tweet, Australia is wider than the moon. However, if we take the satellite's total land area into consideration, then it is way larger than the continent. Okay, all right, all right. That's what I was... That last bit's what I cared about. I was like, hold on. Yeah. This is suspicious. Yeah, that's pretty suspicious. That's kind of a dumb fact. Because it's not factual, really. It's kind of, but not really. I'm going to do another one. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. We have... Uh, the, the do -da -do -do -da -de Whoa. The cornea is one of only two parts of the human body without blood vessels. The cornea is the clear part of the eye that covers the pupil and other parts of the eye. Cartilage and the cornea are the only types of tissue in the human body that do not contain blood vessels. Uh, your eye also has some other bizarre features you probably didn't know about. Next, find out which... Is, oh, it's just say, tell me to go read more. Yeah, I mean, I so, guess that makes sense, right? Yeah. I, I mean, mean, I don't know enough about the body, but I would imagine of all the things, it's just a receptor... Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things I hear it. I'm like, yeah, it sounds pretty true to me. I don't know enough, but I'm like, yeah, I know enough <laughs> to know that that sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, unless you're an eye doctor, like probably a normal doctor that learns about the body or like a scientist, you don't know enough to like be like, yeah, you know, I can't uh, <laughs> like challenge that claim. But like, it does make sense. So like, sure. Yeah. So that's your fact of the day. <laughs> okay, shit. All right, let's jump into a big news story of the day. Big news story of the day. Day, day. Yep. Um, let's see. We've got long overdue book returned to Massachusetts Library 119 years later. I need to know the book, and I need to know why I'm here for this. <laughs> Here we go. On February 14th, 1904, someone curious about the emerging possibilities of a key force of nature checked out James Clerk Maxwell's An Elementary Treatise on Electricity from the New Bedford Free Public Library. I love it. 
<laughs> it would take 119 years and the sharp eyes of a librarian in West Virginia before the scientific text finally found its way back to the Massachusetts Library. The discovery occurred when Stuart Pline, the curator of rare books at West Virginia University Libraries, was sorting through a recent donation of books. Pline found the treatise and noticed it had been part of the collection at the New Bedford Library and, critically, had not been stamped withdrawn. I, indicating question for you question for you what is mm -hmm. this book called again uh this is the an elementary treatise on electricity okay I'm, I'm looking up this book i love this all right uh it says it had not been stamped withdrawn indicating that while extremely overdue the book had not been discarded Klein contacted jody goodman the special collections librarian in new bedford to alert her this came back in extremely good condition, New Bedford Public Library Director Olivia Mello said Friday. Someone obviously kept this on a nice bookshelf because it was in such good shape and probably got passed down in the family. The treatise was first published in 1881, two years after Maxwell's death in 1879. Although the cranberry colored copy now back at the New Bedford Libra Library is not considered a rare edition of the work. The library occasionally receives books as much as 10 or 15 years overdue, but nothing anywhere near close to a century or more. The treatise was published at a time when the world was still growing to understand the possibilities of electricity. In 1880, Thomas Edison received a historic patent embodying the principles of his incandescent lamp. When the book was last in New Bedford, the nation was preparing for its second modern World Series incumbent Republican president, Theodore Roosevelt was on track to win another term. Wilbur and the Orville Wright had conducted their first airplane flight just a year before, and New York City was celebrating its first subway line. The discovery and return of the book is a testament to the durability of the printed word, especially in a time of computerization and instant access to unfathomable amounts of information. I absolutely love this story. Love this story. <laughs> it is really cool. The value of the printed book is is it's not digital. It's not going to disappear. Just holding it, you get a sense of someone having this book 120 years ago and reading it, and here it is in my hands. It's still going to be here 100 years from now. The printed book is always going to be valuable. The new library, New Bedford Library, has a five cents per day late fee. At that rate, someone returning the book overdue by 119 years would face a hefty fee of more than $2,100. But the good news is the library's late fee limit maxes out at $2. <laughs> Another lesson to find, according to Mello, it's never too late to return a library book. That's a good that's a good message. I remember when I was a kid, my, our library, if I was late by like a week, that was like a five dollar charge. And so I would yeah. I would just be like, I just won't return the book then. <laughs> yeah, people just aren't gonna return it. <laughs> yeah, two dollar? That's a solid deal. You could be late and be like, Yeah, I messed up. Sorry. Here's two dollars. And they'd be like, Thank you, sir. That's great. That's yeah. fantastic. That is. Yeah, hey, there's some libraries like this is like two hundred dollars and we're gonna make you eat this book. <laughs> like, I don't want to eat the book. Like you're gonna eat the book. Your library card will be revoked. Like, oh and then, you're gonna, okay. <laughs> then you're gonna eat your library card. Yeah, shit, I'd be thrilled if anyone wanted a book at all right now. Yeah. I'd be like, no, we'll pay you two dollars to take a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's an awesome story. I like that. Yeah, I like that's that cool. a lot. That was not yeah. The insanity I thought it was going to be. Loved it. Big fan. Yeah. I was hoping it was and one that, of those books that was like, Ways to Date a Woman, 1900 edition. <laughs> oh, yeah. That would... Like, wow, this is, this is really something. Yeah. Some guy used it all these years later. He was like, this doesn't even work. <laughs> um... And that's your news story of the day. All right. Well, that's it for us. Thanks so much for listening and watching. I hope you're enjoying this podcast. Grandor, hit him with the socials. We've got socials. We got youtube.com slash Cox and Crendor podcast. That's where you can find all these podcasts. Uh, you can also hit the bell, subscribe, like, and comment weather stuff. So you might get your weather request brought up on this show. Also, we have youtube.com slash Cox and Crendor. That's where all the animations are. We're also on Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, and other places. We're also on our own things. We got YouTube.com Jesse Cox, YouTube.com slash Crendor, Twitch TV Jesse Cox, Twitch TV Crendor, Twitter Jesse Cox, Twitter Crendor, Patreon Jesse Cox, Patreon Crendor, Instagram Notorious Cox, Instagram Crendor is taken, TikTok Jesse Cox, TikTok, TikTok Crendor, 
and uh, the Warhammer Crendor, the Kren Clips, Cox Clips. Yeehaw. Okay, that's it. We'll see you all next time, and as always, shake the rhino. So we can continue. <laughs>